No complicated. Right? Okay. Now we move on to the third method, the calculation of third method, which is moving average method. Right? So here is the uh, moving average method calculations. Right? Okay. So moving average. Moving average month. <clears throat> okay, so now we have a first of the month. We have a first of the month. So first of the month, the balance is the same, right? One thousand and twenty, right? Tenth of the month, we issue five hundred. So still, the value is the same, five hundred. So out of one thousand, we used five hundred. So how much left? Five hundred and. 20. Now we purchased 1000 at 24. All right. We purchased 1000 at 24. At this price, we purchased the raw material. So now, how much we purchased before? 500 at 20. Now, I mean, how much we left before? 500 at 20. All right. 500. And 20. All right. And how much we purchase on 15? We purchase 1,000 at 24. 1,000. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's a it's a 20. It's a it's a 20. It's a 20. All right. And 1,000 at the rate of 24. All right. So the total value is a uh, thirty-four thousand. All right. Total value is thirty-four thousand, and total quantity is one thousand five hundred. All right. So that's why you can see that here, the total value or the total cost or the price of inventory is thirty-four. Quantity is fifteen. So we can calculate the value per unit. All right, which is 34,000 divided by 1,500. So means the value of inventory, the average is 22.67. So that's why 1,500 multiplied by 22.67. Whatever number is that? So here. So this 22.67 comes from here. All right. Okay. Now we issued 250. Of course going to apply the same 22.67 all right so out of 1500 we used 2500 at the rate of 22.67 so 1500 minus 250 is 1250 at the rate of 22.67 all right on 26 we issued again raw material Right? We use it. We use 500. So out of 1 to 5, 0 minus 500. So 750, the rate is the same. 2.67. So this is the value. Right? Now 28, we purchased. All right? We purchased 500 at 26. All right? The same thing like as we did over there, we going to do here as well. Right? So what does it mean? We have 750 at 22.67, the balance, right? And 500 at 26. So total is 30,000. All right? And how many units total we have? 1,250. So the average is 24. All right? So the average is 24. So that's why 1,250 at 24. So here, we are doing exactly when we purchase on 15, we did the same thing over there too. We find out the average. Alright, if you like, I can write like this. I have to write it above. So, like uh, 500 at 26, 750 at 22, right? 6, 7. Alright, so we got it 
it's, it is 30,000. Right. We call 30,000. And the units are 250. So divided by the number 250. So we got 24. So here is, is the purchasing um, way, purchasing calculation when we purchase the material. Here is the last one is the 30th, the end of the period. So we end of the period we issued 500, all right, at 24. Of course, because the 24 is the price. So how much left? 750 left at the rate of 24. So the value of 750 is 18. All right, so the idea is that if we are applying FIFO methods, the value of 750 is 19,000, all right? If we are applying LIFO methods, the value of 750 is, if I'm not wrong, 16,000? Yes, 16,000. Value of 750 is 16,000. Right, and here is we are applying moving average method. So the value of 750 is 18,000. So LIFO methods gives you the lowest cost. All right, LIFO methods give you low cost. Right, if there is a high inflationary period. LIFO methods will enhance your cost. Company will apply LIFO methods to reduce their tax obligations, tax liabilities. Right? Okay. So, but out of these three methods, the most popular method is the moving average method. All right? Because you don't have to really rotate the, the stocks in order to find out the, the rotation value of these stocks. Right? So, most common method is the moving average. Most, most of companies, they apply moving average. And it's also quite simple and the basic way to calculate the value of the stocks applying the moving average method. Alright? So here is your learning outcome three. So learning outcome three is finished. Alright. Now we move on to the uh, next learning outcomes, um, which is your Inventory Management System or JIT. If you look at your slides, your slides use the title is JIT, just in time inventory management system. As I said in the class that we have are two kinds of inventory management system. One is a JIT and another one is JIC. Alright? JIT stands for just in time. We order raw material time to time. As we need it, we order. We don't need, we do not order. All right? Just in case we order raw material in a large quantity, in any case, if there is a high demand in the market, at least we have a sufficient amount of raw material to meet the demand of the customers. Right? OK. Uh, another name of just in time is, we call it pool manufacturing system all right and jic is push manufacturing system all right pull pull manufacturing system and push manufacturing system why we call it pull manufacturing system because we start pulling or using raw material as per the demands all right so let's say so normally the procedure is we buy raw material right we 
process it. All right. Product finished. All right. And we sell. All right. For the sales. We sales. All right. So this is the mainly procedure. All right. But for uh, for just in time, it doesn't really start with raw material. It starts opposite from the sales. We find out the sales, right? And depends how much sales we require. As for the sales, we estimate our production units, how many products we have to produce. Right? And of course, we do not need have we do not need to contact to the store department to supply material to the production department, right? Because we are not holding the stocks or right, product material, material we order material to produce product or you can say that's we order material from the supplier and we do not keep raw material in the store department because we order time to time because we want to save our ordering cost oh, sorry uh, getting cost right but there's a one condition to apply just in time is First of all, you must have a good market research. Right? You need to know the actual demand of your customers. Right? If you are able to estimate the right amount of the demand from the customer, then it's useful to apply existing time. Right? If you're having some kinds of uh, miscalculations over the demand estimation, then probably you require more material or you require less materials right? because your, your estimation has a problem so your buying material quantity also have a problem too all right so uh, the first thing of course your market research all right and second one is a uh, you must have a reliable supplier all right if you have a reliable supplier means you have a good bonding 